Now, today is World Book Day, where events are taking place across the globe to introduce children to literature and encourage them to take more of an interest in the written word. It's also been revealed that after 40 years, the children's book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, is still going strong as it's been voted the best children's bedtime story in a survey of parents. So, with our own children, how important was it for us to encourage them to read good literature? I think it is important. Um, I failed completely. <laughs> My boys don't read at all. Well, they, and all through their childhood, you know, I read to them and they read and they loved it. And then there's this point, I don't know whether it's football or whether it's computers or what it is, but I just lost them and I feel very guilty about it. And I'm not being snobby about this before Colleen has a go at me, but <laughs> if you, it's like everything. In, no, because I'm not saying, oh, my dear, one must read the classics from cover to cover. But if you don't start at the top, and aim high, and, and at least within the school, try and get people to read the best that there is. You know, when, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm happy for them to read a comic as well, anything to get them to read, to use their imaginations. But I think that, that, that this idea that we used to be taught books and we were read to in school, or we had book, you know, we had books that we all read and then we discussed, and that whole thing now with, with children about choosing their books. But it, it's good, but, but equally they might choose a boring book and then you've lost them. Mm. And I do think that education is about the best you can have in those years. Mm. And then hopefully after that, uh, something mm. will happen and you'll see the light and enjoy a book, because there's nothing that's fantastic to read. Mm. I must admit, in terms of the choosing your own books thing, because Finley's going through that at the moment. He's eight, and um, you know, obviously, he's just at the, he's just at the, the beginning, if you like, of his learning of his reading life. Um, and to keep him interested, he has been allowed to choose his own books, and actually, that's really helped him because rather than reading something he's not that interested in. They're, they're quite funny little stories now that they have. So when we do it together at, mm. at home, you know, he reads to me, we can talk about it and engage with it a little bit more. And, um, at his age, I think it helps. I do agree with you, though, that as you get older, that you, need to be, you need to be stretched a little bit. You need mm. to be pushed. And, and that's where the, you know, the Dickens and the yeah. Shakespeare and all, all that sort of thing, although you might not read it in everyday life. If, if it's if school, you, you need school, to be nice done well. School. That's mm. the trouble. You, I, think have... as long as, I think as long as they're reading, and I, and I am impressed at the moment with... The, with the school that you know it's it's really big at school about reading I mean it's the one homework Kira has every single night is reading and she loves reading books and I grew up you know my dad was a very big reader and we all became readers and I remember him sitting there reading me bed st bedtime stories and stuff I do think I, I love the fact that kids read and I do think it's important but I don't think you know there's all there is a bit of snobbery about yes but they should you know read the classics and they should read Shakespeare and and I think the problem is is that when they get to that part of school where they they actually do have to read Shakespeare some of them especially if they're doing drama that's when they go oh bored reading because mm. it's hard it's a and hard it's read not, well, not that though, I know because I've never read well, that's it. I mean if it's if it's if it's not if it's not inspiring you taught then they're going to be bored I have to say in my in my experience of talking to other mums and dads about this it does seem that that no matter how well read, no matter how encouraging the parent is or not, that your children will decide whether they're booky or whether they're mm, not. Mm. You know, and Matthew, who's now 21, I could not force him. He wasn't even that, that interested in being read to, unlike Louis, but he won't let me do voices, which I get really fed up about. He goes, <laughs> Mommy, can you, just, can you just do it without the, without the voices? <laughs> um, <laughs> but Louis absolutely loves it, and like at Finley School, they, they're, they're in a band, you know, in a coloured band, so they could sort of yeah, choose within yeah. that. But, I mean, I just... I loved it, but the trouble is, I still like the same books that I, that I had then. I still get a little sort of excited thing over finding a Janet and John book, not the ones that have been really launched but I'll go in and Louis goes to me why are you smelling those books it's because there's a smell of a Janet and John book that just isn't anywhere else <laughs> and for me, that like that oh, oh, do you remember that. and there was a certain green which I can't see I mean I think that's even a more a slightly more modern one than th th than there was but I just love those just the pleasure and I can still remember the little the little stories and everything mm. I love Janet and John books when when the smell them? I smelt them I smelt them first <laughs> and I can still smell me famous five as the actress oh, said I love um, yeah, famous, <laughs> famous five and secret. What was it? And secret seven. Yeah. Well, you see, I was a classic. I did Wind in the Willows. You see, there's nothing like. <laughs> well, Ratty and Mole. You know, you can't beat them, really, can you? Never mind Janet and John. Talking about, you know, reading funny voices. Have you ever done a done a CD, an audio CD of a children's book? And, and then played it to your children. I used to play them to my children, and I'd done them professionally, and I'd proudly put it in, and we'd all be listening, and, and I'd be... 
<laughs> <laughs> they were just... I'd bored myself to sleep. I know. Oh. But the thing is, just quickly, Matthew, who was never a reader at school, you couldn't force him to read at all, now at nearly 21, devours yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, absolutely devours tell. them. Loves all sort of philosophy books, so you know, anything to, to do you, with Stephen Fry. Well, really? it does save him talking to me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably sniffing them, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, good.